Our thoughts go out to every Victorian who's going through a difficult period. Uh, we know as well that there have been issues around the Crossroads Hotel uh, in the southwest of Sydney. I'm very pleased that uh, Anne Stanley, uh, one of uh, our team uh, in Canberra, has uh, just informed me that she has tested negative. She was uh, self-isolating uh, as a result of the fact that she had uh, been to the hotel in recent times, and that is good news for her and her family. But there are many people out there who are self-isolating, doing the right thing, and we need to uh, ensure that we remain vigilant against this disease. This is not business as usual. Uh, this disease is a major problem. I do want to say that it is good that the National Archives have released the palace letters in full. It's a good thing because Australians have a right to know in full the events that led to the dismissal of a democratically elected Labor government on the 11th of November 1975. I'm joined today uh, by uh, the Shadow Assistant Minister for the Republic, Matt Thistlethwaite. And one of the things that has defined uh, my generation and those older is our experience of the dismissal. Uh, I went to school just up the road here in, uh, at St Mary's Cathedral and I well recall one of uh, my first political memories is uh, Vince Crow, my history teacher, uh, coming in, and now a constituent of mine in Haverfield, uh, coming in and saying that uh, the Democratic government has been dismissed by the Governor-General. And the shock, even as a young uh, boy at that time, and uh, I remember the, the chaos that was there on the streets of Sydney as a result of that dismissal, I remember going home as well, uh, getting home late, and my mother saying to us that they have dismissed our government because this was, of course, uh, Australians who are Labor supporters had waited 23 years for the election of the Whitlam government. Uh, the Whitlam government, like all governments, was not without fault, uh, but they did transform this nation and they made us into the modern, vibrant, community that we see here today. And uh, those heady days whereby we withdrew troops from Vietnam, we recognised China, we implemented free tertiary education, of which I was a beneficiary. We created Medibank, uh, later changed uh, by the coalition government, but then Medicare coming in. Uh, the Whitlam government uh, was one uh, in which we saw uh, advancements for women, advancements for multiculturalism. Uh, we saw major engagement in our cities through the Department of Urban and Regional Development. Uh, we saw uh, areas of this great city like Woolloomooloo and Glebe saved as a result of the intervention of the Whitlam Labor government. And uh, it is, uh, I think, a blight on our character as a nation that a democratically elected government was dismissed. Now, we will go through uh, the many uh, letters that have been released today, and uh, that will occur with historians over a period of time. But I want to say this, that the actions of uh, the Governor-General on the 11th of November uh, to dismiss a government, to put himself above the Australian people, is one that uh, reinforces the need for us to have an Australian head of state, is one that reinforces the need for Australia to stand on our own two feet. The fact that we have waited uh, 45 years for correspondence between uh, the Queen and the Palace and uh, the Governor-General in Australia says that there is something very wrong with our structures of government, the fact that someone across the other side of the world uh, was 
involved and engaged uh, in this process. So I might ask Matt to make some further comments as well and then happy to take questions. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, firstly, I'd like to congratulate and thank Professor Jenny Hocking for her decade-long campaign to uncover the contents of these very, very important historical documents that tell the truth about the most significant political upheaval in Australia's history. Today, Professor Hocking has been vindicated in the contents of those documents being made public. And the High Court was right to determine that the Australian people have the right to know our history free from interference from the, uh, the Crown in Britain. The Australian people uh, can look at these documents now and can understand the true meaning of what occurred uh, back in 1975. And it was unfortunate uh, that through these documents, they were withheld from the Australian public uh, when Sir John Kerr gave these documents to the National Archives. Uh, it was his view that they should be released in the future and the Australian public should know their contents. Yet in 1991, when he passed, uh, Buckingham Palace intervened and said that those documents should remain secret until 2027, and then permission must be granted by Buckingham Palace for the documents to be released. Now, in modern Australia, that is wrong, and the High Court determined that the Australian people have the right to know what is in these documents. The uncovering of these documents today highlights the fact that in the future, once we get through the COVID crisis, Australia must begin a mature and serious discussion about our future constitutional arrangements with a view to having a serious discussion about amending our constitution to finally appoint an Australian as our head of state. Whilst these documents are important historical records that tell the story of our past, an Australian Republic is about our future. It's about recognising that we are an independent nation with our own culture, our own identity and our own pride in our people and their ability to perform this important role of our head of state. Thanks, Matt. Happy to take questions. Mr. Albanese, from what you have heard about the Palace letters so far, are you assured that there's no conspiracy between Buckingham Palace and Sir John Kerr on the dismissal? Well, it would appear from uh, the letters that there was a discussion on the 4th of November about the reserve powers, but that in the letters also state that uh, Sir John Kerr did not inform as a conscious decision uh, the Queen of uh, his intention to dismiss the government. Uh, so I take uh, those uh, matters at face value, but of course there are many documents here. Uh, I certainly haven't had the time to go through uh, all of the details. So there's a caveat, uh, obviously, there in terms of uh, historians will look through, but I suspect that many Australians as well will look through these documents. Part of the issue has been that the, the website has crashed in terms of the number of people who wanted to see uh, all of the detail in these documents. Uh, this is an important historical event. It's certainly the most significant uh, historical political event and upheaval uh, in uh, my lifetime. Mr Albany, just on the COVID safe app, do you agree with your colleagues that is a $2 million failure? Well, quite clearly, uh, the, the facts speak for itself. And uh, we were told by the government uh, that it would be a critical element in being able to trace people. And we know that that has not occurred for a single person. So this is, at this stage, it would appear that it's a $2 million dud and the government uh, has to explain why it is that once again there's a gap between what the government said was going to occur and what actually has occurred. And this is something that characterises uh, this government, uh, talking things up big, uh, but when it comes to delivery, uh, there's a, a significant gap there between delivery and promise.